My, my talk is about han how animals that live in the Antarctic work, but particularly as they're living in an environment which is changing more rapidly than anywhere else on Earth. That's the Western Antarctic Peninsula. It's a bit of a thermometer, if you like, for, for the Earth. Um, things are changing there much more quickly than they are anywhere else. I mean, over Antarctica, it's difficult to know what the changes are, but on that peninsula, it's warming at a very, very fast rate. And so it's a sort of harbinger of things to come. So by looking at what's happening there and lo looking at the response of animals, marine animals, to those changes, we could perhaps see something about what's going to happen in the future. Immediate concerns are actually more pollution than anything else. I mean, we now have this new geological period called the Anthropocene, which people are trying to evidence. And the way you evidence it is you find things that human beings have put there. And in Antarctica, there are lots of things arriving that people have put there, plastics and other types of pollution. Even though the Antarctic Treaty says that you're not allowed to pollute the place, but it's coming from elsewhere. I mean, we, we, there's no part of the globe that's not being impacted by us, even somewhere as remote as the Antarctic. My concern is not so much the, the getting rid of those pollutants, it's the idea of the big things that are happening that tells what's happening globally. So pollutants are a real problem locally. Globally, the idea that things are warming, particularly that water is warming and has less oxygen, that's one of the things that, that concerns me, something that probably doesn't get much airtime because you can't see oxygen and you can't see it in the water. But in fact, that lack of oxygen because of things warming up is actually fairly mo monumental in terms of how marine animals work. What I've been doing is looking at some gigantic species. In, in Antarctica you have this amazing set of species that occur nowhere else, but many of them are giants. So little shrimps that you get down in the shore here, which are about this size, they are that size. Now, if we're right about oxygen decreasing because the temperature goes up, if those animals are oxygen limited, the big things will go first. And so you'll lose a whole set of biodiversity, a whole set of what makes Antarctica work. It will just disappear, um, just because it's big. And that's one of the specific things that I want to test. Will the big things, the giant things, disappear because they're oxygen limited, because the temperature increases?